Speaking of the draft, Greg Bellick. Hold on, did you, man? You were answering. <laughs> well, he's today. sitting waiting for I us. I know he's waiting here, but let me inter- at least let me start here because it's uh, Greg Ballack's going to join us here from uh, obviously from Sportsnet. People know him from uh, 650, the morning show, but Greg's been doing work with Elite Prospects as well. Elite Prospects today, I don't know how many pages this thing is 1600 pages or something ridiculous like that. They dropped their draft guide. It's incredible. I've already scanned through a lot of it. Uh, definitely going to be diving in full time. Greg is doing the work for the goaltenders there. Greg Ballack joins us now. Laddie! Greg, how you doing, man? Jeez, what happened to the hair there? Holy cow! I wasn't sure if you were gonna go with the laddie or or Greg Ballack, so it's it's good to hear my my actual name for once. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I also uh, I don't know what's going on with the hair. I just decided to grow it out, and of course, it's a very good time of the year when I'm being asked to do a lot of video podcasts, so everyone gets yeah. to to witness the, oh, it looks the madness. No, it looks good. There's some flow on it when you nod your head. So like when he's really going in on a goal, you'll see that flow. And uh, well, I'm also working with Cam Robinson too, and he's got the, the hair, right? So I got I got to um, emulate that now. Yeah, good luck. Jeez, that guy's got it uh, going up. But uh, we will, I've seen some videos of Greg, uh, of, uh, or sorry, of Cam, like uh, owning his kids in the backyard with the water fight. Your, your kid's still too young for that, I guess. Yeah. Right? Greg, you're not, you're not, you know, taking shots at the I don't know. Just I think you could take them. I think you could, I think you could work that out. <laughs> All not right. Yet. Let's, let's yet. get into some goalies because uh, we've, we've spent a little bit of time just talking about one goalie because he's Italian and quads wanted to, to get in on Damian Clark. But let's, <laughs> let's start with what you guys have ranked as your top goaltender in the draft and correct me if i'm wrong with any of these because you know i don't care about goalies but trey augustine uh six foot one guy coming out of the united states national team development program he was their starter but i did find like there was a lot of different guys getting quite a bit of starts there i think it was almost like a rotation of two players uh but tell me why trey augustine is the number one goalie in your guys's ranking uh well yeah, it's sort of a toss-up this year, right, with the, who the top goalie select is going to be. And, of course, we're probably going to talk about a few of the names here. But, uh, yeah, the, the guy that I like the most, at least, is Trey Augustine. And it's uh, for the reason that he's the best skater of the, the draft class that we have this year, amongst the goalies, at least. So uh, the fact that he's so polished in that regard uh, just makes me very excited about his his floor, just Mm. to know that he's at least going to be a professional goaltender where he goes from there. The the sky is sort of the limit with him, but you at least have that base knowledge knowing like he's, he's your safe bet. And he's, he plays such a very technically sound style. I know that's such a cliche, but I I put him in the same regard as like a a Dustin Wolf, Carter Hart type of goaltender where they're going to be off a few teams draft lists or further down simply because of his size He's six foot one, so he's not a tiny goaltender. He's same height as those guys that I mentioned. Uh, but it's what he does with his size that excites me, at least. When you actually look at the reasons he's having success, it's his technical details of his game. And it all starts with his skating. Like I said, it really begins and ends there with, with a lot of goaltenders. And uh, he's able to play just a controlled style. You, you never feel like he's out of the net when you watch Trey Augustine. That's the part that excites me, right? When you... You just see him make, he has to make a bold move, but he's right back in his net. You know, he has very good, uh, what I call net awareness. So he knows where the frame of his net is all the time. So like I said, he's not the biggest guy, but the size he does have, he keeps it within the frame. And that's such a unique thing that you don't see in 17 uh, year old kids very often at goaltending, at least, right? You you tend to develop that later on in your, your career, but he's got it already. And that's the part that excites me. Crease awareness reminds me of Michael DiPietro. Easy. Easy name to throw out there. But, okay, uh, Greg, who's got the most upside of any goalie in this draft? Who has the most upside? Because you just <laughs> talked about it. Augustine, obviously, safe bet. He's going to be a pro goaltender. Who's got the biggest upside? Well, a lot of people look at the the six foot six uh, Michael Horapel uh, out of the USHL, Omaha Lancers. He's... Uh, he's got that potential, right? I, I compared him in the, the EP ringside draft uh, preview to Ben Bishop. And I know it's a, it's a tough comparison simply because he's just a huge guy, but he's able to use that size effectively already, which is another thing, like I said, that with Trey Augustine comes a little bit later for most goaltenders, but he's got it already. So you can sort of build from there already with him, which is the exciting part, right? So a lot of teams will just look at him, see the six foot six frame, see that he can move a little bit, and be excited by that already and have them way high in their draft ranking simply because of that. They won't even look any further. They're just going to go there. But there are other aspects of his game that that are uh, bode well for the next level because he can't just be a huge guy and expect to do well at the NHL level. So uh, for me, uh, one thing that really stood out with Harabal was his ability to get edges anywhere. 
So there's actually one clip that I have of him. He's fully splayed out on his back and he lifts up his left leg and he's, he gets an edge and he actually pushes across the crease on his back somehow. Like he just, he, he's able to get an edge anywhere. And, you know, that's, that's the type of mobility down when you're low and out of position, even for him where you're still able to move and you're six foot six. Like that's not an easy task for shooters. A lot of the time when you, you have the type of frame moving around the way he can uh, maneuver with his edge work. So that's, uh, that's a guy that you're going to see a lot of uh, people say will have the highest ceiling in this draft, because you, like I said, you look at that framework where you can work with, with that and man, there's, there's a lot you can do with that. And then there's the guy that you kind of alluded to off the top who, uh, I would like to talk about of it is uh, Damian Clara, who you won't see maybe a top of a lot of lists, but he's made a lot of ground in the last little while. So Quads, are you are you excited about this kid? I mean, yeah, because he's Italian. I, honestly, <laughs> I haven't done the draft research that because here's the thing, Greg, and I, and you you understand this. The draft research I've done in, in past years, I really liked Koskenvo in his draft year, but I'm always looking at it through the Canucks lens. So I'm not really looking in the first three rounds because mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see the Canucks select a goaltender there. So what I'm looking for is the guys in the later rounds that maybe, you know, they're playing behind a porous defense. So their numbers aren't sexy or whatever it is. Um, you know, they have a lot of raw talent. That's I know that's what Ian Clark really likes to target mm -hmm. when he's looking at these goaltenders. So I haven't started my looking at the back of the draft because it, honestly, it took me a while to find Koskenvo, but then once I did, I was like, yeah, they're definitely taking this guy. Like, this guy <laughs> is their draft pick, and then sure enough, they took him in the fifth round of that draft. So I haven't really done my draft research, but I do know this Italian kid's there. Tell me about him. Yeah, I, if you're hoping for him later in the draft, that might not be a possibility. Uh, at least lately, it's he's gotten a lot of buzz, right? He's getting a lot of people talking about him uh, as, a, as a high riser of the goalies, at least in this group. You know, he's uh, he's not a guy that came into the year with a lot of clout, but he's certainly coming into the draft now as uh, uh, it, it, it's like a split with him almost. Yeah, I feel like some teams are overlooking him and other teams have him right up there, possibly even top of their list. So uh, I certainly have him higher than than most people that I've seen uh, in terms of the rankings. But uh, what what really gets me about Damian Clark isn't the fact that he's also six foot six. Yeah, he's another massive goaltender in this draft group, but he can skate. And, it, you know, his, his finer details of his footwork need a lot of work, which a lot of bigger goalies tend to need some time to figure out. It's a lot of movement going on with those limbs when you're that big, uh, but he's strong. And, and the types of pushes that he gets, uh, whether it's from reverse VH or even from a standing position, it's it's a strong push. And, you know, he's got that that strength already. And what that leads to and what makes me really excited is the fact that he beats passes on his feet. So when you're six foot six, and shooter gets a pass, looks up, and he's already on angle, in position. You know, he doesn't take a lot of depth, but he, he uses it when he can. Uh, but either way, you look at him, you know, there's not a lot of visual net to shoot at. That's going to excite a lot of scouts, right? They're, they're going to see that framework to, to work with. Uh, he's a goalie that you would assume would do really well in, you know, a system that's strong and, and predictable. He's able to focus on the primary threat. That's the, that's the kind of guy I want to get from this draft, right? He's... Uh, he's if he's available in the third round you know that's i think that's a time you start looking at taking a guy like damian clara he and like i said he might not even get to that point if there's a team that has him at the top of their list he might be the the first goalie taken which is uh he's probably the if this is vegas betting odds he'd be the third guy i have as the first goalie off the, the draft i'd have augustine and, and harabal ahead of him but uh yeah in, in terms of top end talent he's he's a guy i'd be looking at I wonder if there's any dirty betting sites where you can just be like first goalie off the board. Like I've never seen that. <laughs> like, you know, it'd be, it'd be great to get that. Well, it's, it would be such a crapshoot because it's you guys know uh, ranking prospects in general is tough, yeah. but ranking goalies, it's it just comes down to which team has a pick in which they would consider taking a goalie, and they have a goalie that they really like that they would consider taking. So it's it's tough to get them in order when it comes to this time of year, but. You know, for me, Harabal would be my betting odds favorite to be the first goalie off the board. I personally would take Augustine as the first goalie, uh, but those are the two big names. And then there's the wild card, like I said, Clara. Can't teach size. That's what it comes down to. Do you have anything <laughs> else on draft? Because I'm going to start talking out yeah, with Greg here. Just one question about the draft, and it can be a quick one. The first goalie taken off the board last year was 41. You're assuming that I, I'm assuming because this draft feels a little bit deeper. Do you think a goalie goes ahead of 41 this year? Are we looking? Are we looking towards like the third round potentially? Do you see a guy going in the second? I guess should be my question. 
my my general vibe if you're going for the vibe check for the, for the goalies uh, getting taken uh, as you know it's, it's it kind of happens and then there's a run of them right so that's that's who will be the first one to kind of break is the way to look at it and my general vibe was kind of late second round you start seeing them come off the board the last week or so i've been hearing possibly higher you know pick 45 46 47 teams might already start be looking at a goaltender so that surprised me i was thinking with the type of class of goalies that it is it would be a later second round pick you start seeing them come off but that's the the latest scuttlebutt is uh some teams might be looking even higher in in the early second round range okay because i was getting excited here and there wasn't yeah. going to be in the first two rounds it's it's yeah. a time <laughs> the hockey world's coming around to this uh but greg one thing that you were very early on and i know this was something that you contributed to elite prospects was talking about some of the free agents that were available the canucks end up signing the goalie that you wrote about at the time nikita mm-hmm. tolapilo let us know about this guy because we i look at the Svenskin numbers and i'm like oh wow they they have something here so do they have something here greg yeah, I, I liked them, you know, from my report that I did. And I didn't know the Canucks would be signing him, uh, you know, at the time that I uh, I wrote it. And I, I had a positive review. You know, he's a, another guy. He's another massive goaltender. I feel like there's a, a lot of those that we're talking about these days. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's a guy who's developed slowly over the past couple of years and, you know, had a pretty good season in that, you know, Swedish league. And I just think he's a good project. You know, he's for a guy like Ian Clark, he's sort of your typical – you know, guy that can move a bit already. And, you know, Anders Nilsson kind of brand goaltender that you're looking at. Uh, and I think he's got a, a decently high ceiling. You know, if he could, if he could do what he did with Markstrom to Tola Pilo, it's, you know, he's got the framework there for it. Uh, whether or not he gets to that point, I think is, uh, you know, he's got some tracking to figure out, which tends to come with working with Ian Clark. You know, you, you work with him and things tend to domino start to fall into place. So I think, uh, I'm never going to doubt uh, a guy that maybe he had his eye on and wanted to bring into the organization. So that's uh, uh, the fact that I had a positive already review before I knew Ian Clark also wanted to bring him in is, uh, you know, reassuring. But uh, yeah, he's, I don't, you know, I wouldn't expect him to be, you know, guns a blazing right as soon as he's going to need an adjustment when he gets to North America. But uh, yeah, I think he's definitely a guy down the line you could you could look at as an option. I shared that feeling when I had the Koskemvo, when I called out Koskemvo before uh, before the Canucks <laughs> actually drafted him. And I'm glad you brought up Tolapilo because nobody talks about him in this market. Everyone's like, oh, who's the third veteran goaltender going to be? I think I, I think you got to go with a split of Seelovs and Tolapilo down in Abbotsford. Demko gets hurt if that happens. You call up Seelovs. He's ready to start NHL games, but I think he just needs to play games. Like That's that's my take on Seelovs, Greg. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just saw him at Latvia. Uh, at the World Championships with Latvia tournament MVP. My take on him is just that he just needs to play games. And quite frankly, I don't think it really matters if it's in the NHL or the AHL. I think mm-hmm. he just needs to play games. So this talk of him, oh, he should be the backup at the NHL level. I don't buy it. I don't think it's... I, first of all, it doesn't make financial sense if you're ownership because Spencer Martin's making the same no matter where he is. So I think Spencer mm-hmm. Martin's your goaltender at the NHL level. Mm-hmm. You call up Seelovs if you actually need a starter at the NHL level. I think Seelovs just needs to play. What do you think about the goaltending situation as a whole for the organization? Yeah, I know. I, I just I feel like I don't want to be an arty party pooper, but uh... <laughs> Sorry, I was workshopping that one with a dog behind the scenes. Uh... But yes, uh, Arter Seelovs is a guy that I have been proved wrong about, I think recently. And I, you know, should have known better than uh, a guy that again works with Ian Clark and, and obviously has the skills that Ian Clark identified as somebody he'd want to work with. So, uh, for me, coming into his Canucks career, it was all about the aggressiveness and whether or not he could tone it back a little bit. Uh, you know, if those guys tend to get even more aggressive as they struggle and as they feel like the game is faster around them, they feel like they need to get faster and it's just a bad recipe and it can be lead to a lot of guys going back home real quick. So I had that kind of worry with Seelabs when he came in. But again, working with Ian Clark, he's obviously a, an expert that reeling the game in and, and using the aggressiveness when you need to, but not necessarily all the time. So mm-hmm. Uh, he's done an excellent job of of adjusting to that style of play, and it's certainly paid dividends, right? You see the consistency that follows. He still has those ups and downs because he is, at the very base of it, a rhythm based goaltender, right? He's he plays a lot of reads off the rush. You know, he's uh, still aggressive with his depth a lot of the time, but uh, you know, it's 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 better than it was, right? And you you see a little more consistency than you did before, and you're gonna see need to see a lot more of that if he wants to get to the next level. So, I preferred to see. You know, I, I like the Tolopilo signing, but I would have liked to see a more um, 
experienced veteran uh, third option brought in. I know like a Colin Delia sort of style goaltender. I would have gone even a step further. Um, and, and, you know, instead of spending eight, 900 K on a goalie, maybe spend 1.3, 1.4 million on a backup third option, just because you need to have another guy with, you know, 50, 60 games under his belt that knows how to step in and play. And I feel like, you know, a guy I've been I've talked about on the show, I've been really high on in his career is Anthony Stolarz. I know he's injured now. He's not an option really. Uh, but that style of goaltender, you know, a guy maybe under the radar who's been a backup most of his career, but you need someone like that in the organization. And I feel like the Canucks would have benefited from a more solid third option like that rather than somebody out of Europe that's a project that you're going to work on. And then a young kid and then a Spencer Martin, obviously, who had his struggles last season, who I still think is a capable backup goaltender. It's, you can't I mean, look too much into that sample size. The team was a mess in front of him, yeah. you know, so I, there's a lot of I have a lot of time for Spencer Martin and and the way he's played. But teams now need three goaltenders, right? And I, I'm less confident that they can do it with the three that they have now. I would have liked to see a, a third option that has a little more experience. There's a lot of talk about, listen, if, if Demko does go down, Silovs gets that starter role. But like I, when I first started looking at Tolapilo, I'm like, this nobody played more games in Osvenskin, even though he's young. Like, he mm. had the wheels played off of him. So I'm, I'm really curious. Like, and obviously Ian Clark likes this guy. Like, uh, are we not talking about him enough in the goaltending mix? Like, because I feel like what he did in the Osvenskin is damn impressive. <laughs> for his, well, yeah, we have on this show. I'm already... 40 minutes past the two. I, I just, you, you hope those adjustments are quick, right? And exactly. if, what if the Canucks have an injury early on, right? And oh, there you go. He's your option. He's your next guy up. Like yeah. that scares me. That scares me for a team that supposedly is going to have playoff aspirations, right? This is, this is the stuff you have to think about before the season begins. Like what are our options here? And to me going into the season, if I was the goalie guy within the organization, I'd feel a little uneasy. You know, I'd have confidence that I can do it with these guys, but I certainly wouldn't be going in saying, yep, we're, we're a team that's set. We got we got our guys. That's that's not the feeling I would have going into the season. Well, Greg, we'll leave you on this because I just want to ask you, you being a part of what uh, Elite Prospects did with this draft guide, I, I've loved it the last couple of years. I've, uh, I haven't been on for all three, but this is, I think, my third year using it. Uh, how much fun was it just working with the Elite Prospect guys and being able to contribute the goaltending aspect of it for this year? Oh, it was awesome. It was uh, big props to J.D. Burke and, and the gang because they, they brought me in sort of mid-season. And I didn't get to experience the full uh, starting of it all, but just being thrown into it and seeing the the amount of collaboration that went on to to creating that thing, and you need to have that that to for it to exist, right? It doesn't exist without that type of collaboration, and uh, it, it was just really cool to see how everybody had a voice. And uh, you know, it's a tough tough job being the goalie guy coming into that, right? Because it's you know, not there's not a lot of people that you can really talk goalie with, right? It is <laughs> you're just kind of everyone just kind of listens to you and say, okay, yeah, but it, they they know a bit more than the average, and 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 even JD had uh, really nice things to say about some of the reports. So I'm I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and uh, I try not to be too negative. I feel like I come across really negative when I when I talk goalies because it's a lot of it. You know, you're you're comparing guys against each other, right? But at the end of the day, these are the best in the world, and you just have to think about that. And um, yeah, this this report i hope uh, helps guide people in in this draft and uh, there's 32 goalies in it and uh, i i sort of just tried to uh, talk about their basic style and and the way that they play and what to expect when you watch them play was sort of the way i went about it so i do get into detail their their, their ups and downs and what's good and bad about them but i tried to just give you sort of a visual idea also what to expect when you, you flick on a game and see this kid playing what style of goaltender are you going to expect to see so if you're interested in that kind of stuff i uh, i highly recommend it Absolutely. It, it's an incredible guy. What, 1,600 pages, something like that? I got to double check this thing, but just ridiculous for yeah. anybody that Command wants to. Command F is your friend. Is <laughs> <laughs> well, <for> that one. <laughs> Greg, you're our friend, and we appreciate you joining here to talk some goalies. It's been uh, way too much for me. I, I love you, Greg, but <laughs> God damn, I, I'm, I'm staring outside the window. It's bright outside. I'm done with this goalie. Talk, Atta boy, so. Greg. As we'll see you uh, <laughs> next week. We'll have you right back. Oh, oh no. I, don't I was know. wondering how Fabes was going to take this, so this is oh, exciting. I'm, I, I'm, I'm you, you didn't glaze over at all during my discussion. Oh, if awesome. I got closer to camera, you could see my eyes are watering. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like falling asleep but the brightness from outside the windows keep me awake here but greg no in all honesty appreciate you do uh taking some time and uh chat some goalies with quads and, and i'm also here too so thanks <laughs> there he is always greg. a pleasure guys
Absolutely, Greg. Greg Pollock joining us there uh, from Elite Prospects. Not even sports now. We won't even give them a shot. To. <laughs> He's there in the morning as well. He's good on health and breath. Really good. I I thought it was funny yeah. to hear because yeah, like how do you go? Because have I don't know if you've seen Elite Prospects, but they have their YouTube videos where they show like the live discussions about rankings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just I, I haven't watched all the videos start to finish, but I'm curious to see like uh, when they get to the point where Greg just like says a goalie. Does everyone just like? Does anyone rebuttal? Like, you yeah, know, exactly. Or are, you, or are you just like, okay, Greg's got him at fifty-five. Let's put him there. I'm, like, I'm surprised. I, JD at one point was like, uh, Quads actually told me he likes that guy. Pick someone else, Greg. Yeah. All right. JD doesn't like my goalie takes. Yeah. JD and I butt heads well, no, quite I mean, a bit. Okay, uh, so Zephyr Epic promo code Hockey Season yeah. is the one you're gonna want to check out there.